Okay, last video that we're going to talk, last video for drug discovery. We're going to talk about fragments and ligand efficiency. So the general idea behind using fragments for drug discovery is we're going to find some fragments. You're going to find a fragment with a reasonably good binding towards our protein, our enzyme, whatever target we're trying to act upon. And what we can do from that fragment is we can optimize it. Optimize it meaning get some better binding, get some better um, bind, get some better binding and specificity for the protein or, or for the fragment to the protein or receptor. When I say optimize, we're going to lower the KI value. And once you're done optimizing it, you possibly have a drug. Okay. So one thing I want to go over is what this whole graph was from lecture. Y axis is molecular weight. Molecular weight, really, really important. The really important number is 500, okay? Because from our Lipinski rules, in order for a drug to be well absorbed, most likely it's going to have to be under 500 molecular weight. And then potency such efficiency is on the x axis. It's given in terms of Ki. Now, what's a little confusing about this is going from left to right, we're actually going to be decreasing concentration. So we have one millimolar, 100 micromolar, one micromolar, 10 nanomolar, and one nanomolar, okay? So on the left side, we're going to have higher Ki values. And remember, a higher Ki value means a lower potency, okay? So a higher Ki value on the left, lower potency. And then on the right, we have lower Ki values, and a lower Ki value means higher potency, okay? What you want to get from this is as you go from left to right, okay? So as you go from left to right on this graph, the binding, the potency of your given uh, ligand or fragment or drug is going to increase, okay? Now, what we see is that pretty much the drugs all fit in right around this Ki value, this type of efficiency. So that's our target efficiency that we want to reach, okay? So in the process of drug discovery, you're going to run an HTS. You're gonna run the high throughput screening and get some hits. And these are possibly going to be some molecules that could be our candidates like to look at, maybe that they could possibly be drugs. You'll notice that most of them they don't have enough efficiency. They don't have enough efficiency, they're not potent enough as binding, and their molecular weight, it's like near 500, so it's really out of the question. But we have some fragments that are between like 100 and 300 molecular weight. These are low in molecular weight, and they have somewhat of a good efficiency based upon their weight, okay? And the whole purpose of using a fragment is if it's under 300, you still have like 200 molecular weight worth of, you know, residues and side chains and everything that you can add on there in order to bring your efficiency up, okay? So the process of optimization is you're going to add those chains, increase the molecular weight until you can get your desired efficiency or potency for your drug. Okay, so you're going to take the overlap between the fragments and the HTS hits, basically whatever your fragments are from the high throughput screening, and you're going to go through the process of optimizing it. Once you optimize it, you're going to get a possible, you're going to get drug candidates, and then of those drug candidates, some of them are going to be possible drugs. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the process of optimization is increasing the potency, lowering the Ki value. What's going to happen is you have to raise the molecular weight in the process because you're doing one of two things. One, you're adding specific binding residues. And two, you could add hydrophobic residues. These are two ways you can lower the Ki values. The problem with raising the number of hydrophobic residues is it works pretty well. Um, it was referred to in lecture as greasing it up. But the penalty is you lose a measure of specificity. And if your drug's not as specific, it can bind to other targets and that's what causes those side effects, okay? So ideally, you'd want to add some specific binding residues, but that always doesn't work, okay? You need some balance between the two of these. And in the process, you also wanna keep the molecular weight below this magic number of 500. 
okay? Now, with ligand deficiency, the calculation you're gonna have to do is ligand deficiency equals negative delta G of binding divided by HAC, okay? And this HAC, it's your heavy atom count, all right? So it's the number of non-hydrogen atoms inside your molecule, okay? And then the delta G of binding, you can calculate that from delta G of binding equals 1.4 log Ki, okay? Again, make sure your Ki is in molar units, okay? And also take notice that there's a negative sign in front of it, so you have to take the negative of the delta G binding, okay? What does ligand deficiency mean, okay? The higher your ligand deficiency is, the greater the binding ability is per atom, okay? And that means a more promising drug or more promising uh, drug fragment, more promising, like whatever you're looking at. Because at the end of the day, you want, a, you want an ability to bind a specific target. And if your ligand deficiency is higher, you're going to have a more promising drug. Those are the drugs that you want to use to try to optimize and end up with your final drug overall, okay? So that about does it for fragments and ligand deficiency.